For the Daily Radio News on 94.3 WKUF, I'm David Jackson for June 9th, 2016. Prosecutors in a criminal case against two state employees connected to the Flint water situation have obtained a protective order for evidence in the case. Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal reports that Attorney General Bill Schutte's office obtained the protective order yesterday in order to preserve evidence connected to the criminal cases. The cases involved are against two Michigan Department of Environmental Quality employees, Michael Prisby and Stephen Bush, who are charged with misconduct in office and conspiracy to tamper with evidence. The protective order is designed to seal all discovery materials that may be shared between legal counsels from public release and is aimed to keep the cases from becoming tainted by other ongoing investigations. The U.S. EPA responded to Mayor Karen Weaver's statements about new water equipment by reiterating that they expect it to happen by Friday. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that Mayor Weaver said in a news conference this week that although the EPA wants the new chemical treatment equipment installed by Friday, she says that the city does not want to be rushed into installing the equipment before they are prepared. The EPA, under the latest Safe Water Drinking Act, expects the city to have the ability to add additional chlorine to the water supply, despite the water already being chlorinated out of Detroit. The letter from the EPA says that the situation is urgent, noting that during the warm summer months, chlorine, which disinfects the water system from bacteria, evaporates quicker and a supplementary supply is necessary. Japan lodged an official protest with China this morning after a Chinese warship was spotted near disputed islands in the East China Sea. The New York Times reports that while the Chinese Coast Guard routinely patrols the area, a Chinese Navy frigate was seen off of the Senkaku Islands that the Chinese also lay claim to and call them the Diaoyu Islands. The islands under dispute have only seven square kilometers of land, but are strategically located on top of a massive natural gas field that has yet to be fully developed. The frigate did not violate Japanese waters and has since left the area, and Japan is also investigating the presence of three Russian warships in the same area around the same time. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said that the presence of a Chinese warship in the area has made his country extremely concerned and notes that the incident unilaterally escalates tension in the area, adding that an investigation is underway to analyze whether the Russian and Chinese ships appearing in the same area at the same time was coordinated. The U.S. has an interest in the area after signing a security alliance with Japan after World War II that gives the U.S. land for military bases in exchange for a promise to defend Japan in the event of an attack. Earlier yesterday, the U.S. accused a Chinese fighter jet of maneuvering too close and too fast to a U.S. Air Force RC-135 recon plane while it flew in the international airspace of the East China Sea this week. U.S. officials say that since no provocative or unsafe maneuvers occurred outside of being only within 50 feet of the plane, it could have been pilot error. In sports, the Detroit Tigers faced the Toronto Blue Jays yesterday, trying to extend their five-game win streak. Top of the first, Toronto's Jason Smoke hit a two-run homer to put the Blue Jays up 2-0. Then in the bottom of the first, Nick Castellanos answered with his own two-run shot to left. But that was it. The rest of the game, Detroit left 16 on base and allowed two home runs and a triple to end their win streak 2-7. The Tigers now head to New York on Friday to face the Yankees in the first of a three-game series in the Bronx. In Game 3 of the NBA Finals last night, the Cleveland Cavaliers undeniably beat the Golden State Warriors 120-90. Redeeming themselves for lackluster performances in Games 1 and 2, Cleveland starters outscored the Warriors' starting lineup 105-57. Cleveland forward LeBron James put up 32 points, Kyrie Irving scored 30 points, and J.R. Smith, who put together eight total points between Games 1 and 2, scored 20 points last night. Game 4 is back in Cleveland Friday night, where Golden State holds a 2-1 game lead on the Cavaliers. And tonight at 8, the Pittsburgh Penguins are looking to put away the San Jose Sharks at home in Game 5 of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And finally, a Michigan teen who was ticketed as a passenger for refusing to take an allegedly unwarranted breathalyzer test has filed a federal lawsuit against the officer who issued her a $100 citation last month. Michigan judges have struck down challenges to warrantless breathalyzer tests three times in the last 10 years, but the U.S. Supreme Court is currently considering the constitutionality of similar laws in 13 other states. The teen's attorney says that the officer is notorious for intimidating kids, but state officials argue that without that authority to issue a blood alcohol test without a warrant, more drunk driving deaths may occur.
For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.